Hello Magic Community on YouTube, I'm T1 Glistener Elf. I have to do commentary over this one because a substantial amount of the audio here unfortunately is not usable. Some, uh, some talking that was done makes it not usable, but it gives me a chance to do some commentary over this. This is modern, this is, uh, you can probably see it from the video's title, this is Jeskai Tempo or Jeskai Geist versus uh, Devoted Company, Counters Company, whatever we're calling that deck. Uh, and I'm actually borrowing his deck. I'm the one obviously on the left, he's the one on the right, and I'm borrowing his Jeskai deck in order to be able to play. I have Infect, but it's missing about 10 cards that I had to borrow from TJ Pool. Shoutouts to TJ Pool. Oh, by the way, uh, four threes when we roll uh, our poker there at the beginning. Uh, but I, and yeah, three ones. Respectable, but not, not relative to that. So he'll get it. Uh, I had to borrow those cards. I don't have them now because I gave them back. So Chris is an awesome dude and let me uh, let me do this. Next week I'll either have those cards back, you know, borrow them back, or b get some budget ones, some budget alternatives, or make it mono green in fact. I'm not sure. Anyway, we'll get started. And by the way, if my computer starts to lag and I'm not sure that I'm talking with the video anymore, then just understand that I'll probably not talk as much about the match, I'll start talking about other things, because I won't be sure if my commentary will line up with what you're seeing. So I apologize if that happens, but I'll, I'll still try to keep it interesting. Starting off with good old Serum Visions. Alright, and then I see, I think it's Cryptic Command, either Steam Vents or Sulphur Falls as my scry options there. Yep, Cryptic Command and a red blue land. So uh, maybe starting off on the island wasn't ideal. If I have a lightning helix in hand, I'm not going to be able to cast it next turn. Which against knowing the matchup, that's not where you want to be. You want to be able, if you can, to hit a devoted druid. Alright, so he's going to go fetch out presumably a temple garden and see what he gets. And this is my first day playing with the deck. Uh, it's his, so I can't make <laughs> I can't complain too much. Uh, we did make one change before I started the day, which is we went from double search for Ascanta to a single search for Ascanta and a Teferi, Hero of Dominaria. He didn't have any Jace the Mind Sculptor, which certainly would have been my preference, but Teferi's good too. And unfortunately, I didn't have any situations... It's a one-of, so you don't expect it to come up too much, even in a match like this, but where Teferi did me all that much good... But then again, the deck's a tempo deck, and Teferi can play on a control axis in a way that's not exactly where I... I, I don't know. It's not a card you have to build around, but it, it isn't as synergistic with the rest of the deck as it would be in a hard control deck. Uh, so I, I'm going to play, you know, Geist of St. Traft and whatnot. Okay, so he's he draws. So he got an Overgrown Tomb instead. There's another Windswept. And so he can get a planes and have all his colors. Let's see. I'm actually not remembering off the top of my head how I set the top of my deck. So it was a Sulphur Falls. There's Flooded Strand. Alright. The joys of this camera angle, the opponent can't see, but the camera can slightly see, sometimes anyway, what's in your hand. So I can occasionally make a comment on that. Maybe as the camera goes out of focus for some reason. Oh no, don't tell me it does this the whole time. No, <laughs> please, please. All right, it better come back in just a bit. Not sure why it does that every now and then, but in any case, he goes and gets a tap temple garden, and there it goes back. <laughs> Go home, camera, you're drunk. And, <laughs> okay, I didn't mean it, I didn't mean it. Oh dear. Oh dear. Get some rest, buddy. Alright. Wonder what he's got. Okay, so three mana. That's, yeah, so Kitchen Finks. The other one is Eternal Witness, I think, is the other three drop in the deck. I, I imagine there are more, actually, but those are the only two of which I'm aware. Uh, he, he actually told me afterwards that Ronus is not in his deck. He's not running Ronus. He has something else that serves as an outlet for infinite mana. <laughs> Alright, someone's going to respond in the comments if I don't clarify. Whenever I say infinite mana, you have to pick a number, but arbitrarily large number, because that can be anything, I say infinite. There, just, just clarifying. 
And I guess for the people that play exclusively on MTGO, that seems really weird to say infinite, because you definitely cannot actually go infinite there. You have to go through whatever combo loop you have however many times. Um, Alright, so we're drawing. Just keep drawing. Alright, so once I'm at three mana, that represents Geist, that represents Spell Queller. I'm doing something here. Hey, we got the life total back out. It mattered. Alright, so I'm pathing it on his upkeep, so he'll go and get a land tapped. Uh, now, let's see, for the rest of my hand, I'm seeing Cryptic Command. Ah, come on, Jay, turn your hand a little more. I'm seeing a Lightning Bolt. Is that double Cryptic in the back? It, it is a four Cryptic deck, which feels very controlling, but it's also running cards like Geist of St. Traff, so it's, it's a tempo deck. And, and again, Spell Queller. I, I'm personally the kind of guy that's more than alright with winning off of Celestial Colonnade beatdowns or Jace the Mind Sculptor ults, but, you know, it's, it's modern. It's fair to have a faster clock than that. Especially when your creatures like Spell Queller are doing something. Sometimes Spell Queller feels so bad, but I admit that in this kind of deck where you can often back it up with counter magic, that's, it's much better. So, collect a company. Let's see if that's resolving. Spoiler alert, no. We're going to actually take it with Spell Queller. Yeah, it's CMC 4 or lower. <laughs> it, it comes ahead of its own curve. Spell Queller, of course, is 3, and it takes 4. A little bit like Spell Snare in that regard. Alright, 5, we're getting to Cord for a 2-drop. And, yeah, that's resolving. No Spell Pierce for me, unfortunately. while I drink some delicious coffee. Now he's doing this at sorcery speed. He's doing this at, on his turn. Which actually, I mean, that, that makes sense because I'm as close to tapped out as I'm going to be, so... fair enough. Um, however, I kill it with a bolt. I'm checking to make sure if I'm getting Steam Vents or Sacred Foundry. And I'm getting Steam Vents. There we are. Yeah, sometimes I want to go for the double blue, but in the main board, I'm, or double white I meant to say, I'm not remembering any cards that need double white. In the sideboard I know that we have at least one Supreme Verdict, but in the main board, uh, not that I remember. And there's a bee outside that wants to let me know that it wants in. Sorry little buddy. I'm recording. All right, come on, there we go. So there's that helix I was on about. And the Serum Visions, hidden for two, I have a cryptic in hand, I'm letting him go. And now I'm just gonna try to protect this spell, hello. Hello. There we go. Ta-da. <laughs> no, don't worry, I didn't just, Hang up on some random person that's telemarketing. Oh well. So yeah, we have this little buddy. I'm, I think, debating whether I want it to resolve. Because I have Cryptic open, and he has three mana open. Now, three mana... Hello. Three mana means that if I let it resolve, he can activate it once. So, we're helixing it, but he didn't. He did not activate it in response. I, correct me if I'm wrong, I think the activation is three mana, right? Green and two? Uh, which leads me to believe that there's something else being held open. It's probably not a removal spell like Path to Exile or Dismember. I think we would have used it on the Spell Queller some time ago. Um, or especially there when I was more, he well, I don't know, we'll see, more heavily tapped out. I have a ser another Lightning Helix in hand, Double Cryptic, and a Serum Vision. So I, I think I'm well enough in this spot. Had I let the Hallowed Fountain come in untapped, then I could have Serum Visioned here as well. Um, I don't know why I respect 
the li my life total so much when he doesn't have anything on board. Mm. It, it could very well have been a misplay. I could have taken the two. I didn't want to seer visions before playing the lamb because I didn't want to have a moment when I could not hold up cryptic. And had I done that, I would have had three mana. So there's a bop, a boyd, a skite. Now this is interesting because, of course, it's four toughness and ability to redirect means Helix and Bolt won't be doing as much. So this one we are actually going to cryptic. And he has two mana open still, so lo and behold, I'm expecting a vizier to resolve. And, of course, it does. Little does he know, mwahahaha. So, uh, what was that? A colonnade? Yeah, we're just gonna helix it. Just... The only opportunity cost it... So, colonnade will come in tapped, which means I can't helix and hold up cryptic. So, if I helix, which, as you can see, I'm about to do, I'm saying, look, no, no cryptic from me. So, helix it. I'm gonna gain three here. Now, since I can't hold up, cryptic, I'm inclined to use the Serum Visions here. I do have Spell Pierce as well, so the lower I can get myself on mana, maybe the more likely he is to tap out thinking it's relatively safer. As long as I hold up one red and one white mana as well. Which, because of the basic island, I'm able to do. Okay, so, there we are. Draws into, I thought I saw a booty tap. I thought I saw... Okay, you devoted Druid. It was either that or Tireless, tireless Tracker. Those were the ones I was thinking. Alright. Untapping with six, so represent that Snapcaster Cryptic. And I'm feeling alright here. Does he run the Boyd into it? Not yet. Not yet. We're getting there maybe, but not yet. Alright, so Bolt in hand. He's at a virtual six. He doesn't know that, of course. If I can find a Snapcaster, we can bring it a little further than that. Alright, come on. Come on, do something. Or not. Yeah, yeah, this is... This is me playing control, so pass the turn. I'm a Flash Control deck. I'm okay with that. Alright. So, mana. Boyd. We're starting off with a bird, which I guess is a test spell. There. Okay. Now, that's... That's interesting. Um, so clearly he has enough mana to activate the ability if I let it resolve. If it, if it is indeed two and green. So we're going to Cryptic here with uh, red and white still being represented. And I believe I said counter draw. Surely, yeah, okay. And then I'm hoping this was... Okay, so this is... he's In response, I am... In response to Vizier being on the stack, I'm bolting it. So what with Vizier on the stack, I'm bolting the Devoted Druid. Cool. Now we're just down to that little guy. And I think I have an Electrolyze in hand. There it is. Hey, Electrolyze. One, two, and white. Electrolyze, one Vizier, one bird. Draw a card. And a Spell Queller's up. So we're, we're feeling... Pretty good here, actually. Now he runs the bird into it. I'm not sure why there. It would have put him to seven, and nothing in my deck has enough reach for that. And he's going to scoop it up. That's understandable. Oh boy, so that's the deck doing essentially what it's supposed to do. Spell Queller actually being that, that good one for one we want it to be. Oh, I hope it didn't lag on me there. It looked like it might have when we, the transition occurred. Uh, I think we're okay. I'm going to hope we're okay. In any case, he's wearing a Doctor Who X Rick and Morty shirt. Alright. Doctor Who cross Rick and Morty? Whatever. However we're supposed to pronounce that. There we go. So obviously he's going to be... I say obviously, yeah. he's Obviously he's going to be on the play. Because we're a spell snare deck that actually can end up a little bit poor for him. If he thinks, oh wait, one mana, now I can be more aggressive, get the two drop out. In a deck that really cares about two drops, uh, that can punish him, but he's probably going to run that out anyway, whether he's play or draw. 
simply because that's what his deck really wants to do. Both of the main combo pieces are two drops. Uh, also, I have to actually have Spell Snare, and as I recall, I think it's only a one of in the main board. It's the kind of card that I side in or out based on player draw uh, to a substantial degree. To a fairly substantial degree. I find it to be much more impressive on the draw, you see. Alright. He's showing me... Ooh, that's beautiful. Yeah, not looking good for T1 at the mulligan to six. Alright. So yeah, forest into mana ramp. It's a noble. Hi, noble. Offering us noble. Okay. I had to, sorry. He's playing DJ with his forest over there. Scratching that record. Alright, so I, I'll see your one drop with a one drop of my own. Serum Visions into... I think I saw Colonnade and Fetchland, maybe Flooded Strand. And we're bottoming both. Alright. And without remembering what's what else is in my hand, I'm afraid I don't... Okay, maybe, so I see two other lands. At least two other lands. So I may have thought that I was good on lands for a little while and just needed to actually find some more interaction, perhaps. Duskwatch Recruiter. Oh, oh, he swung in for one. I was about to say, that's not a three mana spell. That's, no. He swung in for one, for whatever reason. Serum Visions again. And this represents to my opponent that I might be digging for lands. Uh, so I put two cards on the bottom from the last one, and before I played a land, I cast Serum Visions. So if my opponent has that suspicion, then this helps to confirm it, even though it's not actually true. So that's something that you can do, modern pilots, to try to throw your opponent off, and maybe cause them to play in a different manner. They might think that you're light on lands. And as it turns out, I know I have at least one more after this can't see the rest of my hand too terribly well, but at least one, at least Flooded Strand going forward. Uh, now I let the Hallowed Fountain go in tapped, uh, which represents to my opponent that I don't have, yeah, that I don't have that one drop interaction. I don't have Spell Pierce, I don't have Path to Exile, I don't have Spell Snare, or if I do, that I don't care to use them right now. Hey, you can get a little bit aggressive this turn, that's okay. Yeah, I'm going to let you through this turn. Uh, so, no attacks, and lo and behold, it's a 3-3. Now, this is a little awkward for Kozilek's return, which is in my hand. So, now that it's a 3-3, I'd have to bolt it. Lo and behold, that's what I'll end up doing, but, you know, uh, I was hoping to get a little bit more value out of that. That's what happens when you're on the draw, though. Alright, so Flooded Strand, when do we do it? I think we have to do it on my turn so that he doesn't get a chance to untap with it because its ability is, other than the transform one, is creatures you control cost one less to cast. Both Devoted Druid and Vizier have colorless in their cost, and they'll only cost one mana each. So I'm going to crack it here, beat that thing before it serves as a, as a multi-bird. This is half an Eye of Ugin, is how I like to think of it. Uh, it'll make his creatures cheaper, and that's that's no good. Get some Sonic the Hedgehog referencing in here. All right, Steam Vince, uh, not tapped. I'm I'm tapping it here. <laughs> All right, so bolts. Anything he's doing? Is there anything he's doing? He's fetching in response. That represents cord. And for a moment there, I was thinking, especially since this is a sideboard game. Do we have, say, a Blossoming Defense, or something like that? I was trying to rack my brain, does Selfless Spirit have Flash, which, dear god, it already has everything else. It's a 2-1 flyer that gives your creatures indestructible. Uh, but, no, he's just, he's, you know, just doing the classic. And it's for two, so gee, I wonder what he's getting. Now, if you're wondering, do you get Druid or Vizier here? All of the things being equal, like, for instance, you don't have either one in hand, you get Druid. And the reason is because you want to be able to untap with Druid on the next turn, in case you have Vizier. If you're getting Vizier, then it basically telegraphs, it yells out to your opponent, I already have Druid in hand! And it means you won't go off as quickly anyway. 
barring some janky way to give it haste. I, I guess that could be a thing. Alright. And I'm passing back. In before... Uh, I think here I'm saying something to the effect of just go ahead and slam the vizier. Come on and slam. And scoop. Now, that was a preemptive scoop. I... Yeah, okay, there's the desk watch. I needed to make him have an outlet first. But lo and behold, he did. I mean, the deck has outlets. Walking Ballista does... Excuse me. Desk watch recruiter. He has some tech we haven't seen yet. But we will see in the next game, so I'll, I'll hold it off for a little bit. All right. While we're shuffling up, let me get a little bit more coffee, if that's all right. A little more caffeine to get me through the day. A lot more caffeine to get me through the day. After having Evangeline for a while, the next few days are the hardest ones. So, yeah, I, I don't get as much sleep. I'm missing her. She's precious to me. Alright, so starting off with Serum Visions. And past turn. He draws into Eternal Witness, plays Temple Garden tapped, and then passes the turn. I mean, he Path to Exile is not great in this matchup anyway, and on the first, well, my second turn, it's especially not great, so there's no real reason to hold that up. You're not really representing anything. Horizon Canopy. Into Duskwatch Recruiter, he's going to have to pay one, which I, I hope we get, I hope we see that. We, okay, we did. He <laughs> got there. Got there. I, I could have sworn we did, but, you know, I, I could have been wrong. Oh, if that's my Horizon Canopy he's playing with. My old Horizon Canopy I sold. Oh. Canopies? I'm trying to remember. Honestly, it's been so long, I don't remember how many I had. Um. Oh, dear. In any case, he plays Averdant Catacombs. I'll have to go back and watch the old videos. Go on my channel search by Horizon Canopy and see what deck list in the descriptions it comes up in and go from there. Alright, we're getting an untapped Overgrown Tomb. Mr. Finks. You're a mean one, Mr. Finks. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Uh, he goes up one, or up two, but he, uh, I think, neglected the Horizon, or maybe he already did that and that's what brought him to 15. Let's see. It's Horizon 1 to 19, Fetch Shock 16, and then 1 to 15, and then up to Kitchen. Okay, so we're good. We should be good. I haven't poked him for anything yet, so we're good. Life totals are fine now. <laughs> Everything is fine. Alright. Cool. So instead of waiting until his upkeep, I did it now so I could have the maximum amount of mana for this next turn. Which I think means that I have a Geist I'm going to try to cast. Something to that effect. Alright, I see. Serum Visions, Lightning Bolt, Kozilex Return, Blue Card. Well, we're starting off with the Serum Visions. Draw into Did Not Get a Chance to See. Island Serum Visions, which I think is actually the reverse... I think that's the reverse order um, for how I put them back. Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, okay, so so that next turn I can Serum Visions into the island anyway, and then Scry 2. I'm going to want that island for the next turn, I, I strongly believe. Uh, it's a Sulfur Falls? I'll say Sulfur Vent. Where's Steam Falls? That needs to be a card. Steam Falls. Alright, so another Horizon Canopy. If we make it to the late game, and that's something to be worried about. That inevitability, especially since I keep giving him lands. Not inevitability, but it draws him out of dead, dead pockets in his deck. So, the obvious play... Oh, that's Snapcaster Mage. So what should be the obvious play is Snapcaster Spell Snare. That is not what I do. Um, honestly, I think it's just a lack of matchup knowledge. I didn't remember that I had the Spell Snare. Uh, and so I, I just didn't put two and two together, but that's what I should have done. What I end up doing instead is Snapcaster Path. Uh, spoiler alert. So, yeah, the Eternal Witness is going to resolve here. Yeah, that's, that's unfortunate, especially since it makes it where I don't have as much mana to work with on this next turn. 
But we're doing it. We're getting there eventually. So here comes Snapcaster. We're going to flash back that path to exile so we won't get a token. Yeah, for either side of it. Didn't die, didn't cast one during his turn, but gets a land out of it. So definitely not my finest moment, unfortunately. I, I miss that. I, I do think lack of experience with the deck is what got me there. It is my first day playing with the deck and third match with it all together. But even so, I should have put that together. Put those, put two and two together on that one. All right, well, live and learn, right? Now I know. And I caught myself, you can't hear the audio, but I caught myself, you know, right about now. Am I going to trade Snapcaster and Eternal? Well, okay, we'll see. Now he attacks. The answer is yes. Yes, I do. No, I didn't go into uh, supervisions on the next turn. And I don't remember why. What was it that I did? What was it that I had in hand that I was... I guess I was holding up Bolt. That's what it was. I was holding up Bolt. Ah, there's our little tech. There's our little bit of tech for you all. All right. This is a standard card, a Dominaria card, that uh, I don't remember its name, but it's flying you, other creatures you control, and planeswalkers you control get hexproof. And in this deck, he can flash it in thanks to Court of Calling. And it also has a, a mana sink. Four in green, green, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. So once you've made effectively infinite mana, da-da. All right, so, but it's a 3-4, so a bolt on it looks a little awkward. But there's nothing he's going to be able to do about it, because it's time for Kozilek to return. Two damage to everything, so the four toughness creature with three damage marked on it has to die too. It ends up being a two for two, so not quite where I had wanted to be. Now we serum visions. Now we get there, and I sort. Now I sort my lands. All right. So cool. We get our draw and our scry into. I think I'm seeing Geist Hallowed Fountain. And I put them up in reverse. Oh. Well, I kind of missed how I did that one. Oh dear. All right. So, letting him draw as I'm super tapped out, which is a, a very technical magic term. Super tapped out. Oh boy. Let's see. Come on. So, he taps two. I'm seeing a druid. Oh, a scooze. Alright. So, I have to represent because of all of that green mana that's left up. I have to understand that he represents being able to eat three creatures. So Bolt is not really a thing right now. And with that much green mana, he can activate it once, and then in response to a Bolt, activate it twice. So I better have a number of answers. Instead, we're going on the Geist path. What he doesn't know is that I have double Bolt in hand. Oh, he's going to do it now. He's going to do it now. He's going to bring out Collected Company. Alright. So this is fine. The only other card I can think of it possibly being is Restoration Angel, but it's a Collected Company deck. Th those two aren't great friends with one another. Restoration Angel doesn't like to come to that party. Alright. So I think one of them is going to be an E-Witness, as I recall. So it's Kitchen Finks. Scoos. Okay, not, not E-Witness, but another three drop. It's... Mr. Finks. John Finkel over here. I'm sorry. So instead, we're going to bolt two scoozes. Yeah. What am I going to do about the 3 2, though? That's. Yeah. Not sure there. Alright, so as I turn my lands around so that they're oriented so that you all can read them. Out of force of habit, I suppose, I've turned them to the right, but when I think about it, I try to turn them the other direction. And he didn't use the planes for it, he used Overgrown Tomb. Alright, so yeah, he gains two more life. Uh, he'll pay one into a Duskwatch Recruiter. Yeah, yeah. Alright, Geist, come on. What am I going to have to do to 
get you to do something. Ooh. Let's see. So I'm on his upkeep pathing a single kitchen finx. Please get a forest this time. Please get a forest. Tell me you have one in the deck. He must have had a really lopsided hand with all the, you know, he got two planes off of those. I, I find that curious because I think of the deck as being so green heavy, green centric. All right. He's about to have a lot of mana to get his way to work his way out of this out of this as if he isn't ahead right now uh, because of his horizon canopies. And a Gavany Township. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. All right. Kakate Koi, come at me, bro. <laughs> He's just going to activate it now. Plus one, plus one counters all around. You get a counter, and you get a counter. Now, seeing that with a Kitchen Finks is even more disconcerting. Uh, that, that's going to be hard to deal with if I don't find a path. And I think I've already used two. Yeah, I'm seeing Path in the Yard, Path in Exile. I knew it felt like more than that. Alright, well, this is either not a land... No, no, it's not. Okay, okay, I remember what's going on here. Alright, so let me walk you through my thought process. Uh, please reveal the card soon, Jay. Don't tell me you debate this for a while. I know that I have six damage on board. He, he didn't play the cautious conservative route by only attacking with one creature. He went with both, and that means that guys can definitely get through. Well, if I swing and just do that, then I have, you know, six mana, or six damage, rather. You see the path lingering in his hand. Spoiler alert. And I can get him to eight. I have another card in hand that I'm considering playing here to try to up the amount of damage that I can do. If I... Let's see. Come on, show that other card, Jay. Because now I'm doubting myself as to what that last card is. It's not a... Maybe... No, it is a land. That's right. So I, the other option is I can also swing with Celestial Colonnade, except I catch myself here. Oh, wait. No, I can't. Celestial Colonnade requires white mana to activate. So I was debating, do I also attack with Colonnade? The answer ends up being... <laughs> you idiot! <laughs> you idiot! No, no, it's fine. So what I should have done, obviously, then, is just hold up the steam vents as if I have something in hand, and maybe force him to play a little bit more conservatively. Maybe attack with only one creature next turn, since he doesn't have lethal anyway. Uh, however, I end up getting the worst of all worlds. It's getting late. It's something like 10 o'clock as of when this one was recorded, which certainly that's no record, but, you know, would have preferred to be... A little bit more cognizant right then. So anyway, he's going to swing in for nine. Put me at one. Okay. At one. There we are. <laughs> okay. Now, even through that misplay, I can still potentially win. What I have to do is attack with Geist of St. Traft and have a burn spell. Well, hey, I top decked a lightning helix. That's what a pro tour move, right? So I'm attacking, and there's a little bit of confusion here. You can't hear, there's a miscommunication. Uh, I thought that I was casting that helix post-combat. He thinks that this is during combat. Now, we didn't clarify, and also, we're not exactly... Well, he owns the story, it doesn't matter whether he gets prizes or not. And I'm low enough that I'm not going to get any prize support. So in terms of material consequences, there is zero difference that this makes. But he goes and paths the Goose of St. Traft. And this is the point where I say, you know, I think that we had a little miscommunication there. And he's apologizing because he, he realizes it too. But Chris is a cool dude. Ta the, the whole Tapstart crew, they're really cool. So no, no sweat, no sweat. He's, uh, you know, I, I'm saying, no, you got it. We'll count it towards you. I don't mind. Um, yeah, so that's a sideboard card, apparently. And, uh, or maybe it's not. Maybe it's main board and he's just pulling it out to show me. Yeah, this is, this is why I have it. Because we do have a bit of a discussion on the card. Oh, right. So, yeah, we're, we're still talking about it, I think. Um, come on, get your sideboard cards, Jay. Sin Collector. Seems like a good card against me. I, if I deal with it, it's not, you know, 
a, a kite sail freebooter or that Orzov zombie that's tied hollow scholar where I get the card back. I don't get it back from Sin Collector. So I took out a Cryptic Command, a Teferi, and the Search for Azkanta. Essentially, I lowered the curve. In the, well, not lowered the curve. I took out two curve toppers and one card that is great in grindier matches, but I was not anticipating that here. I, I'm playing against a mid-range combo deck, so I was expecting to need more answers sooner. So I brought in a Wrath in Kozlek's Return. I brought in a Wrath in Supreme Verdict. And an iffy one. I think this last Spell Pierce that you're about to see, uh, I, I decided in another Spell Pierce, which he and I have a quick discussion about um, Spell Pierce versus Search for Azkanta, taking out the Search for Azkanta for it. And he thinks that that might not have been the correct play, which maybe he's right. I, I think that it's fine. The trick with Spell Pierce that makes it a little iffy is that I'm not anticipating that many non-creatures from him. Four chords, four companies, okay, th that makes a lot of sense. Maybe some number of path, and as it turns out, he cited in a path against me. But that's really it, at least as far as I'm remembering. Unless I'm really missing something, that's it. And so, the Spell Pierce isn't super effective, especially in the early game. As a result, the Search for Escanta might have made a little bit more sense, especially since later on it would let me dig for things like Supreme Verdict, like Kozlex Return. Uh, that was my reasoning in any case. And I wonder what you all think, so if you could leave that in the comments, I'd appreciate that. Help. I, I appreciate people constructively disagreeing with me, much more than people just simply agreeing all the time. And yeah, we're, we're having that discussion. So he brought in two scavenging uses, two sin collectors, two voice of resurgence, and a path to exile. Now I wonder, especially for Skews and voice, well, and path for that matter, how many are main board? Those seem like the kinds of cards that you could legitimately have as main board cards. Voice of Resurgence to allow you to outvalue a lot of decks, and to give you a little bit, just a little bit, of wrath insurance, I suppose. Um, yeah, that's a. Uh, I wonder what cards he sides out. About a minute left in the video, if you wouldn't mind showing me real quick. We're having that discussion about Path, and Path, he's, he says, is a little bit iffy because I don't have that many creatures, but I do have Colonnade. And so he needs something to do with that in a way that a card like Abrupt Decay or Maelstrom Pulse would not. So that makes some sense. Uh, but, you know, in Spell Queller, you get your card back. So even though you're giving me land, you get your card back. Alright. Gotta pound it going on. Alright. Well, I really do appreciate the crew over at Tapstart. Again, Chris let me borrow a deck so that I could play in the tournament. And I... I really do enjoy getting to jam some modern, even if it's a deck that I'm not fully familiar with. So I apologize for the misplays, but I'm a better player now for having played an archetype that I, I haven't yet, hadn't yet. And I'll try to bring something infecty. <laughs> I'll try to bring something Phyrexian next time. But until next time, you all take care, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.